This is Twit. All right, Ron. It's your time to shine in oh, the app spotlight. Is, and you, boy, this, do you have an app to bring. Oh, yeah. Boy, are you shining. <laughs> this is so nerve wracking. So uh, <laughs> uh, as many of you know, for the past couple of months, years, I've been working on a side project uh, called Scorbit. Uh, well, I'm happy and proud to announce that we launched last week, last Thursday, after a flurry of activity. Um, we launched our mobile app for both iOS and Android, both platforms, same same day release. It is possible. Um, and we also launched a hardware device to go along with it. Uh, and it's all live now at scorebit.io. But uh, yeah, there, if those of you watching the video uh, can see, this is the Google Play Store listing uh, for the Scorbit app. Uh, I made those graphics that you see there uh, when you when you see the screenshots with the, the marketing stuff and all the stuff like that. Um, I have a uh, Google Play developers account. I'm in on the console using all the tools and all that sort of stuff. Mm-hmm. Guys, I helped make an app. This is pretty cool. That's uh, amazing. I know. I'm. 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 I, now, I didn't write a single line of code, so I just want to caveat that I am purely <laughs> the, the 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 business slash marketing slash. <laughs> uh, but I I was very smart in that I surrounded myself with a awesome team of very talented individuals, and we put it all together. Um, so. I'll focus on the app and then I'll tell you guys about the larger things, but I'm happy to answer any questions or like, cause the whole experience is kind of wacky. We could probably do a much longer kind of thing on this, but still, um, so Scorbit at its heart is a companion app. If you like to play pinball, right? So, um, actually for those watching on the video, Burke, I'm, I'm sharing my screen right now. So I don't know if you can see it. I can show you guys the app and how it works and essentially what it does. But, um, I want to say maybe six, seven years ago, I got into pinball and uh, and following a lot of my previous um, past experiences. Whenever I get into something, I figure out how can I make this work. Uh, how can I turn turn this into a job? <laughs> Much like comic books, <laughs> I, I then looked at pinball. But essentially, I just wanted to figure out how to keep track of my scores, right? So um, what we did was we created uh, Scorbit, and and Burke cut away right as I loaded the app. So hang on, you missed all the animation, so I'll do it again. Um, so <laughs> when you open up the app, <laughs> um, what happens is that it immediately is focused on playing pinball, and it uses your location to uh, – cross-reference through a database. There's an amazing uh, database called pinballmap.com out there, and we know the developers. And of course, now in a live demo, it's not loading. So thanks, Burke. I'm going to blame Burke. I'm going to do it again. Um, I can show on my end, too. I've got it, if if you want me to. There you go. I just let it. It just kicked in. Um, so there's an amazing resource called pinballmap.com, which is a user kind of uh, moderated uh, identifying locations where bars and arcades have pinball machines. Not so great in this time of COVID, but we did figure out a workaround for that. Um, but so what can happen is, is that when you open up the app, it says, OK, where where are you? Where are you playing? And so I'm going to choose Creek and Cave, which is a bar just down the road from my uh, from my house. And it gives you the list of all the pinball machines at that bar. And then let's say I'm going to play – OK, so I'm going to play some Adam's Family. Um, now, there are two ways for you to say to sit, log your scores. One is the manual method, which is what I'm showing here in the app, uh, which is where you actually manually enter in your score. So I can type in and I can say I got you know 9 million or whatever it is. And then you upload a photo to prove that you got that score and you take a picture of the back box of the pinball machine where it shows your score and you upload it. And then that way now it is saved. So um, if we go to – when I go over to my feed, um, let me find an example of someone who has uploaded a score. There it is. So here this user uploaded a score of 272 million to Twilight Zone. And there, sure enough, he took a picture of, of, of his score to prove that I got that score. Um, if you play pinball, if you're active in the pinball community, uh, your word is your bond. It's a very dignified community. Nobody lies about scores. You could easily use this app and just like take a photo of someone else's game and upload it. But if ever anyone ever found out, you you wouldn't have a reputation. So it's actually really, really interesting in that people are very honest about the scores that they get um, and that sort of thing. But – through this method, it does actually make it so that you know anybody could upload a score, just upload a photo, type in a number. Um, if only there was a way that we could uh, confirm that you got that score. Well, that's where the piece of hardware comes in. So we designed this little device here, which is called the Scorbitron. 
Um, and this is actually an older version. We got rid of these RJ45 ports because uh, we didn't need them anymore. But uh, down here, it's kind of hard to see in the video if you're watching, but in the lower left, we have a row of USB USB-C connectors. Um, and then we also have power in the um, upper right-hand corner. And this device goes into the pinball machine and it hooks up to different sections of the pinball machine, different parts of it, and it allows you to automatically um, uh, save your score to your account. Um, it works in any pinball machine from uh, solid state pinball machines from the 70s and 80s, like the little ones with alphanumeric characters, all the way up to the uh, ones that came out in the 90s with the animations, all the way up to ones that came out uh, like just last week. Uh, and uh, ironically, uh, an Avengers pinball machine came out from Stern Pinball, and it's got an LCD screen and animation and all stuff like that. Our device works with it as well. So what happens in that case is that when you use the app, um, it's almost like when Rock Band, remember when you would choose whether you're the guitarist or the bassist or the drummer or the vocalist, you you uh, start the pinball game and then it, there's a listing for each player and you say, I'm player two, and it automatically logs the score. And if you're standing behind the pinball machine watching on the app, you see the scores coming in real time. And then at the end of the game, you say, yep, that was my score, save it. And it saves to your account automatically. You never have to enter anything in or type anything in. Um, and it's really, really cool. I don't have a demo, unfortunately, to show you how it works with a pinball machine. I don't have one here, but trust me, it works. Um, and it's really going to allow people to do lots of different things uh, with their pinball machines. A big thing is that uh, pinball is emerging on Twitch uh, as a streaming. Uh, a lot of people are streaming playing pinball, and a lot of these uh, Twitch streamers have come up with these uh, really, you know, kind of uh, complicated uh, camera setups and they use OBS to split it up and you've got a camera on the play field of the pinball machine and a camera on the score score area and a camera on the player. We've made a bunch of tools called Scorbit Vision that allows you to use a Scorbitron in a machine and automatically pull the score from the machine and render it like um, like chroma key or like graphics that we would use on on the live stream here on Twit and have it show up on the stream. If you scroll down a little more, Burke, on the video, you can see a couple examples there. Uh, it's a couple of streams uh, yeah, down at the bottom, stream boards. Scroll down more. Um, yeah, so there you can see a couple examples of setups of people streaming on Twitch where there's a section of – and they show the player name and their scores, and that's all coming dynamically from the pinball machine. Um, as soon as somebody hits a pop bumper, the score goes up, the score goes up on the screen. It's all automatic, and it's all uh, pretty magical. Um, that's amazing. I love it. Yeah, so it's really, really cool. It took – Five years to do from the moment that I said I want an app to track my scores to the moment that my co-founder, Jay Adelson, who um, you might remember, he he was the CEO of Dig and was the found, uh, co-founder of Revision 3 um, and then went on to do Opsmatic and Simple Geo and a whole bunch of other really cool startups. Um, maybe like four years ago, I was telling him about the idea, trying to get him to work with me on it. And he goes, yeah, well, what if we put something in the machine to do it automatically? And then it took four years to develop the hardware and do all this stuff. But uh, but we made it work. Um, technically, it's an IoT device. When you set up your Scorbitron, it, we have it coded so it sets up the same way that you set up a Google Home. Uh, you open up the app and you say, OK, connect to my Scorbitron and it's it uses Wi-Fi like we we emit a Wi-Fi SSID from the device um, and then the phone connects to the device um, and then shares the Wi-Fi credentials and does the whole setup. Let me tell you something. When we talk about how hardware is hard, hardware is hard, people. Hardware is difficult. And just doing that whole why like when you don't take it for granted when you set up your Google Home and it automatically figures out your Wi-Fi and lights up the device, that took us like a year to figure out how to do it right. Right? Like it is very difficult. So <laughs> so I have a lot of respect for everybody who makes uh, IoT devices. I have a ton of respect for app developers. Um, we we developed in React Native. Uh, so that would allow us to uh, quickly develop for iOS and Android from the, from the same code base. Um, but we had to, you know, pretty much start from scratch. The whole build process, the whole sub submitting to the app store for review. And if you want a fun, uh, a amusing anecdote from our launch. Um, the whole time we're developing the app and planning for the launch, we're like, okay, we need to bake in like at least a week for Apple to review the app, and they're probably going to reject something. They're probably going to have a problem with it. We're going to have to make changes. So we bake that into the schedule, and the whole time I'm there telling everybody, don't worry, Google, the Google review is going to take three hours, and it'll be live, no problem, and blah, blah, blah. 
So we submit the app. The whole plan was to submit the app to Apple first and then make whatever changes that Apple was going to complain about and then make the changes to Android and submit Android. We submitted to iOS on a Friday. No joke. Friday at like five o'clock. Less than 24 hours, we get the email saying it's been approved. No changes, <laughs> no edits, nothing. The most un-Apple App Store experience mm. I've ever – like I've worked at companies that have dealt with Apple in the App Store review and like some releases have been held up for weeks as they're trying to figure out Apple wants them to change this button and they don't like the way this is oriented. We went without a single bit of feedback from Apple. Nice job. So great. So then at that point, we're like, OK, let's submit to Google. So we submitted to Google. We got the, the 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 development build in place and we're waiting, you know, basically the way Google Play Console is you change the state um, from, you know, kind of in development to production. So we're waiting. And so then the morning of launch, we're like, all right, let's flip it to production and then it should go live instantly. Right. And uh, we flip it and nothing happens for like hours, like we're dying because now we're on hold because we're waiting for Google. What happened was that when you flip it to production, it triggers another review of the app. And so we had to wait for that to finish. Um, luckily, it only took about half a day. Still, even then, that was slower than we thought Google would be. But the Google Play Console is so cool because you can pull up. They automatically render how your app looks on like over 40 devices. Like screenshots of oh, how yeah. it looks on a, on a Huawei, screen, screen, you know, like all this sort of stuff. So you can, you know, kind of adjust and make changes per device. It's really fascinating. There's so much uh, information that Google does provide you where Apple is kind of still like a black hole. Uh, the Google Play console is really, really, really cool. Um, and yeah, now we now Scorbit is out in the world. We've got it says we've got 50 plus downloads in the apps in the app store. We don't have any reviews yet. But uh, but one of our users did email saying she was going to she was going to write a positive review. So I'm looking forward to that. But uh, yeah, so check it out if you're into pinball. Um, oh, the one thing I forgot to say was, you know, even though a lot of the uh, the the function of it is to find places to play pinball in the world, to go to bars and arcades. We also recognize that now with uh, covid, it's a much different world. And there's a lot of people with um, pinball machines at home. And what we've done is we've enabled you to create your own venue within the app so you can like kind of say, OK, this is my house. You can make it private so nobody can find it and you can load your pinball machines that you that you own and you can play your machines at home and upload the scores. And then we also created a way for you to challenge your friends to beat your scores. So even though we can't play together like we used to in arcades, you can play virtually where if I get a score on my machine, I can challenge my friends and then the app, they get a little notification and they say that Ron challenged you to beat the score and then you can if you have that same machine or access to that same machine you can play it and then it says who won in the in the feed and all that stuff we've got all these ideas about uh ways to expand the uh playing a part experience because of the the world uh that we live in now so uh it was it was definitely a, it threw us for a loop back in march but it definitely uh made us get a little more creative and a little more um uh you know kind of uh tackle the the, the problem in a different way and i think we're better for it so yeah bravo so Bravo, rock, Ron. Hey, I, I don't know if I rock. The people I work with rock, but uh, yeah. Still, <laughs> still, it's it's so awesome. Like I've sat here this entire time with the hugest smile on my face, just listening to you talk about it. Because I mean, five years is no—that's not a small amount of time. It's also a lot of people's dreams to have an idea for something and to be able to see it through to creation. Like that, five years of of work based on an idea that you had five years ago. <laughs> And yeah. suddenly now, like, you have a thing to show for it. You've got an app and a hardware, and it's a great idea. And I'm just – I'm so happy for you. That's so great. I love it. Thanks. Thanks. And, I, and I, I mean, it's a lot of fun. It was originally my idea. I did the branding. I did the name, stuff like that. But I – but. Uh, Jay Adelson, my co-founder and partner in this, has he's been pretty much working on this full time for the past, uh, I want to say, year and a half or so. Um, and has like, if it wasn't for him, we wouldn't get to the point where we are. Like, he, you know, so. Um, but it, it shows that like you partner with the right people and you have a fun idea yep. and you can make it into a reality. And it's uh, definitely a trip. And I know there's a lot of comments in the com in, in the chat about what we can do next with payments and things like that. And Yes, there is a plan. We have a long-term plan about how this can become a sustainable platform. So uh, we're very excited. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm so I'm so happy for you guys. That's so uh, that's something to really be proud of. And uh, yeah, the app looks great. I hope everyone likes also. it. I don't know. And also, yeah. it's so embarrassing because 
like we've been trying to get it right and like are we ready to ship are we not ready to ship and one of our advisors and investors um actually gave us some great advice back in july which kind of you know got our button gear which is that if you're not embarrassed by the first product you shipped then you waited too long yep yep and so we really took that to heart and we spent like all of july and august heads down trying to get this thing out it finally took till september 3rd was you know our, our birthday but uh but it, it definitely paid off and yes the app is bug there there's some little bugs or things i want to change it's not perfect it doesn't have all the functionality we want but now we can grow from here so yep and you will this is the yep. beginning Very cool. love it cool thank you for giving the the walkthrough on that i love it i'm so happy for you